Buonasera. Buonasera. So yes, Leonardo da Vinci was my childhood hero, along with Superman. And I remember when I discovered that Superman was only a comic book character. But Leonardo was real. Talk about big potential. That this is the being who is the embodiment, the expression, the archetype of all of our yearning for the fulfillment and expression of all of our gifts. So I had the chance way back in 1994 to speak to Young Presidents Organization in Florence about Leonardo for the first time. This was really exciting because it gave me a chance to go to Leonardo's birthplace and walk in his footsteps. I went to the place where he died. I interviewed the great da Vinci scholars. I went to see the great works of Leonardo in the museums of the world. I contemplated those works. I started dreaming about the maestro. And from those dreams, seven principles emerged for all of us to apply his genius in our life. People say to me, did you come up with seven principles because it's a good number for marketing? You know, seven habits and so on. It's not bad, but no, I actually, I tried to find an eighth principle, and there just wasn't one. I tried to consolidate down to six. Couldn't do it. There are seven principles for thinking like Leonardo da Vinci, irreducible and complete. So I wrote a paper about the seven principles, and I sent it in to the Young President's Organization people, along with my biography, so they could introduce me. But the person introducing me confused the two documents, leading to the most memorable introduction I have ever received. <laughs> it went like this. Ladies and gentlemen, members and guests, here at the Young President's Organization, we've had many extraordinary resources over the years, but never have I had the privilege and the pleasure to introduce someone with a resume like this. <laughs> Anatomist, architect, botanist, city planner, <laughs> designer, engineer, painter, sculptor, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Gill. <laughs> so let's dive right in to the seven principles for thinking like the maestro. The first principle is curiosita, curiosita. Everybody please say it with your best Italian accent, all together, a curiosita. That's not bad, but let me see some gestures this time, please. A curiosita, è molto bene, grazie. What does it mean? Curiosity. Leonardo da Vinci, was probably the most curious person who ever lived. What was he curious about? Everything. He wanted to know truth. He wanted to know beauty. He wanted to know goodness. He wanted to know the mind of God. Everything else was just details. His curiosity took him up into the sky. You know about his plans for a flying machine? The glider? And maybe the most amazing invention of all, the parachute. Leonardo da Vinci invented the parachute before anybody could fly. That's thinking ahead. <laughs> His curiosita took him underneath the oceans, the snorkel, the diving bell, the plans for the submarine, all first appear in his notebooks, along with the design of the extendable ladder that fire departments still use today, the three-speed gear shift, the ball bearing, and the concept of automation, all first appear in his notebooks. Driven by this phenomenal, passionate curiosity. Here some images of Leonardo's notebooks. You know that Bill Gates paid $30.8 million for, eight, for 18 pages of Leonardo's notebooks. I think you can get my book on Amazon for 12 bucks. I mean, I'm making money. <laughs> 
Leonardo was so curious. He wanted to know the secret of life. Here's the first accurate drawing of the embryo in the womb done by the maestro. And here's the image of the parachute. So what can you do to strengthen your own curiosita? You can do what Leonardo recommends. But before I tell you what he recommends, let me ask you this question. Where are you physically located when you get your best ideas? The shower, right? Number one answer, around the world. Also the bath, resting in bed, walking in nature, driving in my car. Almost no one gets their best ideas at work, even if it's a conscious business. <laughs> what, what's happening in the shower or walking in nature that's not happening in the workplace? You're relaxed. Your mind is free. You're alone, so there's no fear of embarrassment. So Leonardo counsels us, he says, keep a little notebook with you wherever you go and write down those ideas. What will happen to your genius idea productivity if you start to record them? It'll go way up. See, Leonardo da Vinci is thinking about something. He wakes up at 4 o'clock in the morning. It's a wacky, off-the-wall idea. He writes it down in his notebook. Average person wakes up 4 o'clock in the morning, crazy off the wall, wall idea. They say, hey, I'm no genius, and they go back to sleep. But if you really want, if we want to model what geniuses do and advise, this is one of the simplest things. And I encourage you to make it a practice here at this wonderful conference. There's so much delicious information and inspiration coming our way. Incubate it. Jot down your thoughts about it. They don't have to be fully formed. As a matter of fact, that's part of the secret of nurturing the creative, is to nurture those unformed, incomplete ideas. The second principle for thinking like the maestro, dimostrazione. Everybody with big gestures all together. Dimostrazione. And it means demonstration. Leonardo said to his students, you must demonstrate things in your own experience. Think for yourself. Become what he called an inventore, an original thinker. What was the challenge to independent thinking at the time of Leonardo, leaving aside the strictures of the church? Information was hard to get. Books were rare. If you could find one, what language would it have been in? Latin which you would only have learned if you came from a noble family. Leonardo taught himself Latin when he turned 40 so he could read the classics as they became available. What's the challenge to independent thinking today? Too much information. How do you cut through the tsunami of spam? and really think for yourself. Well, Leonardo gives us guidance. You see these three images of a flower? Leonardo says, if you want to really think about something, get three perspectives. The third principle for thinking like the maestro. We say this one with an upward moving, lilting gesture, per favore. Sensazione. Everybody, sensazione. Molto bene. What does it mean? Sensation. Leonardo said the senses are the ministers of the soul. He trained his sensory awareness like an Olympic athlete trains their body for competition. But do you know what Leonardo wrote in his notebooks 500 years ago? 500 years ago, he wrote that the average person looks without seeing, hears without listening, touches without feeling, breathes in without awareness of aroma or fragrance, eats without tasting, and talks without thinking. That was 500 years ago in Tuscany, long before the Kardashians. <laughs> now, this is, this is an obvious competitive edge 
and a necessity for a conscious business. You and your team need to be sharp. It's a sensory term, isn't it? It means, as we explored earlier this afternoon, listening to understand. Being, you can't do it unless you're fully present. It means you're seeing what's going on. Only if you're fully present will you see that the body language of the person you're talking to is giving you a signal that's a little bit different than the words they're saying. You need to be sharp. But hey, this is also the secret of enjoying our lives. Being present in the moment with beauty. See, the Italians understand this. They have la dolce vita the sweet, soulful life. Even the French have it pretty well worked out. Joie de vivre, the joy of living. So the Italians have dolce vita, the French have joie de vivre. What do we have here? Happy hour? <laughs> you know, we need help, people. <laughs> And, and, and here's the advice that Leonardo gives us, serious, quite serious, if you want to enrich your creativity. Ask yourself this question every day. How can I make my life and the lives of people around me more beautiful? We were doing a seminar for v, VA hospital nurses, and they were doing work at their, in their small groups on how can we make our lives and the lives of the people we work with more beautiful. And they came back and they reported we run a PTSD ward. We have veterans coming in, and they've been through hell. And in our waiting room, we realized the TV's on, turn to the news. So you're sitting there waiting to be treated for PTSD, getting more PTSD. They took out the news programming, and they put in the, you know, those nature scene programs. And they started getting real creative and doing aromatherapy and art, which they changed on the wall, because what they found is it uplifted them. As Sean anchored us earlier, emotions are contagious for better or for worse. So be really careful what you catch and spread. Leonardo says, catch and spread beauty every way you can. Do you know this, this painting is the baptism of Christ by Leonardo's teacher? Leonardo just did this little angel in the corner, the one with the flowy, curly hair. And these two angels are great. The other one is by another of Verrocchio's students. And the other angel looks like a bored choir boy. I mean, this is unconscious capitalism. <laughs> another day at the office, right? <laughs> This painting is the baptism of Christ, so that angel's going, oh, okay, baptism of Christ, whatever. Take down the notes and file the report. Blah, blah, yada, yada, yada. Whereas Leonardo's angel looks like, oh my God, this is a miracle. Which is what the painting is all about and what life is really all about. So there are two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is though... Everything is a miracle, and part of the secret of that miraculous approach to living is the conscious appreciation and sharing of beauty every opportunity you get. So you know this guy? Let's just uh, put your left hand on your heart, please. Right hand, cross your body, pointing up to the sky. Then tilt your head and do that really cool Leonardo smile. This is St. John, and then we say, Sfumato, everybody, sfumato. That's the fourth principle, and it represents awakening to the intuition. Raj speaks so eloquently about the importance of reintegrating what we call feminine values with masculine values to create a transcendent, holistic, balanced way of being in the world. And this is part of what Leonardo is trying to tell us 500 years ago. He says, awaken your heart, have a higher purpose, and keep your sense of humor. Of course, we see this same theme in the most mysterious and most famous painting in human history, the Mona Lisa. What is she smiling about? 
Let's find out. Everybody, please, assume the Mona position. Imitate her famous smile. How does it make you feel when you smile like Mona? I asked a, gift, a, a, a group of gifted children, 80 kids ages 8 to 11, to do this exercise. And you can imagine how earnest and wonderful they were as they did it. And one of the kids says, she's got a secret. <laughs> Another kid says, yeah, she knows that everything has an opposite. <laughs> and then the kids start saying opposite, like boys and girls, life and death, good and bad, night and day. I asked my average corporate group, I say, what is she smiling about? They say, I read in the Wall Street Journal that the famous smile was caused by a dental problem. <laughs> right? The kids got it. Mona Lisa is the Western equivalent of the ancient wisdom embodied in the symbol of yin and yang. The secret of life is the harmony of the apparent opposite. And this is the symbol of our fifth principle, everybody, arte, arte. Scienza. scienza, art and science in harmony. You all know this guy. He's the symbol of our sixth principle, corporalita. Everybody say it. Corporalita, balance the body and the mind. So you knew Leonardo was a scientific and an artistic genius, but did you know that he was renowned as the strongest man in Florence, that he was a master fencer, an equestrian master, a juggler, which I was thrilled to find out. He gives advice on wellness and health that is as relevant today as it was 500 years ago when he said, learn to preserve your own health. Avoid grievous moods and keep your mind cheerful. Eat a healthy, wholesome diet. Savor every meal. Share dining with friends. Get moderate exercise. Without wellness, without wellness, there is no conscious capitalism. You'll hear, I hope you get a chance to meet Dr. Eva Selim. Speaks brilliantly about the importance of integrating wellness resilience into your organization's culture and into your own life. So you know this painting. I like to think of this as just kind of like a, a board meeting. And the chairman of the board has just made a big announcement. Look at the way everybody's reacting. Right? Leonardo's the first painter to capture this moment where Christ says, one of you shall betray me. And you look at the disciples, they're going, whoa! Just like you might be if you're at that board, really? We're having that many, we're making that big a change? We're acquiring that company? No way! But you see the serenity of the holy figure in the center. Because he's aligned with a higher purpose. This is the seventh principle for thinking like, Leonardo da Vinci, connezione, everybody say it, connezione, everything connects to everything else. This is why we have conscious capitalism. If everything didn't connect to everything else, we wouldn't need it, but it does, so we do. So I want to give you a practical way to think like Leonardo to integrate everything we've talked about here. Here are my notes for this presentation. You may photograph them. You may do whatever you want with them on your device. What's my image in the center? Parachute, because Leonardo invented it. Curiosità, keep a notebook. Dimostrazione, learn from experience. Sensazione, sharpen your senses. Sfumato, embrace your intuition. Arte scienza, balance art and science. Corporalità, balance body and mind, and connezione, be a systems thinker. Everything connects to everything else. The art critic Bernard Berenson said of Leonardo da Vinci that everything he touched turned to eternal beauty. My wish for you is that you are touched by that beauty and that it enriches your life 
every single day. Grazie mille. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>